Hey everyone, uh, it's Clay Blair uh, with Boulevard Recording, and boy have I got a bunch of videos for you guys. Um, I'm doing a four-part series on the Wyatt album, and I'm going to do the most extensive research and explanations and examples that I've done of any of my videos. So the, the Wyatt album officially started recording in May of 1968 um, with the standard A-Team, which I would, not to throw any shade against anyone else, because as you're going to see, lots of other, other engineers worked on the White Album. But what the Beatles had been used to since 66, which was Jeff Emmerich and George Martin producing. The India trip happened in February of 1968. And right before they went to India, they recorded Hey Bulldog. went to India, came back in early April, and they go back into the studio in early May with George Martin and Jeff Emmerich. And the first thing they do is Revolution One, which is the slow version that shows up on the album. I'm going to be kind of a carrying the history of the album throughout this four-part series. So this video is actually going to be based on bass. And I'm going to try to work a couple myths out and maybe prove a couple things um, that haven't been proven before. Uh, it is all up in the air. I mean, we don't know. We, we weren't there. Um, but technology has gotten so great with AI and, uh, you know, the rock band stems that came out years ago. Um, that if you have a lot of the instruments, you can really kind of figure out what they were using. Um, one of the things I want to touch on on this video is the Helter Skelter mystery, which was recently uh, attempted to be debunked by You Can't Unhear This, which is a great channel. And it's very convincing. Uh, a lot of the evidence that he shows about the, the outtake, and it sounds like Paul is playing the part while he's singing. Um, there's a lot of evidence that says it's not John uh, on that part. Uh, so I, I want to start off early in the White Album when Jeff Emmerich was still engineering because uh, by July he'd had enough and there was just a lot of drama in the studio and he decided that he was no longer going to work on the album. And so he left, and in came Ken Scott, who recorded the majority of the White Album and mixed it. Uh, one thing that um, is for sure is that the jazz bass is the bass of the White Album. Um, there's no Hofner. Um, there's very little Rick bass that I can tell. Maybe you think Rick bass is on something that I'm missing, but... I'm going to show you guys kind of where it all falls, um, and we're going to get into it. And I'm going to start off by showing you just kind of one of the earlier songs that they did, Cry Baby Cry, and kind of play through the jazz bass and the Rick bass and see what you guys think. <laughs>
So the jazz bass has got kind of a more distinctive tone. And even with the tone rolled off, it's It's got this kind of like grunt that is the Rick bass is kind of more toot, <laughs> like a tuba almost, I feel. Like that bass on the back pickup or the front pickup. Um, and the jazz has just got more of like this kind of, you know. And I didn't even like tweak the amp to get that sound either yet. Like I, that's kind of like a little bit of a different sound than this, but it still sounds like Dear Prudence. Like that's a very kind of distinctive sound. So the Rick bass to me is either gonna be like kind of tuba-y if it's got the, the bridge pickup or it's gonna be really big and full, like come together. All alone guys, just me. Nobody else is here. Just me and the ghosts. So I just kind of wanted to kick off this bass series with that example, cause I kind of just recently discovered it and I really uh, got a kick out of it that, you know, I thought that this album was a Fen very Fender album and it is, but the Rick bass shows up in a couple of little places. So tell me I'm wrong in the comments. Um, moving on, we're gonna kind of jump back into this guy and we're gonna dig into Helter Skelter with the bass six and the jazz bass. But will you, won't you want me to make you? So one of the uh, more recent topics of discussion in the world of AI and re-releases of albums and deluxe editions is who played bass on Helter Skelter. Everybody wants to think it's John, of course. That's so cool, John on the Fender 6, but uh, some new evidence by another channel, You Can't Unhear This, recently made the argument that it was John maybe on the original first session on July 18th in 1968, and that when they did the remake on September 9th, two months later, that Paul was actually playing his jazz bass and John was playing the rhythm. Following Mal's account, most sources, including the official White Album Deluxe Edition booklet and even the Beatles rock band video game, assume Paul and George on guitar and John on the Fender 6 bass, a unique six-string instrument with a distinctive tone used occasionally during the White Album sessions and later on during the Get Back sessions by John or George. Playing devil's advocate, I'm going to play... Um, I'm going to play back a backing track I did for Skelter, and I'm going to do both basses. I'm going to do the Fender 6, and I'm also going to do uh, the jazz bass. And the Fender 6 would have had a mute, and this one doesn't, uh, which is all good. I'm doing a mute with my palm. Um, but you, you, just so you know how similar the basses sound, um, they definitely could easily be mistaken, mistaken in the right circumstances, especially... Uh, with the mutes engaged, that was kind of a, a telltale sound of, of the bass. Uh, so I made this backing track, um, not my vocal. Huh, I wish I could sing that. So I'm going to just play back a bit, and then I'm going to do the same with the jazz bass to see what you think. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. Where I stop and I turn. You ain't no 
to the top of the slide Where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride Till I get to the bottom and I see you again Yeah, yeah, yeah But do you, don't you want me to love you? I'm coming down fast for the miles above you So much fun. play in the band that that play songs like that because it's just like it's too much fun it's really such a cool album with such crazy songs it's probably the most eclectic collection of songs the Beatles ever put out that's why so many people love it this bass amp the basement the blonde basement that, that Paul had for the longest time was always in the studio and him and George would fight over it because it was, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but I imagine so because there's a lot of pictures of each of them plugged into it at various occasions on any album, really, from Rubber Soul all the way to through Abbey Road. So there was a showman also that actually sounds really good on bass and I've done a bit of testing with that uh, and with this, and I think it can go either way on some songs, but um, I think that the the basement, the blonde basement, definitely has more uh, of a forward sound than the the showman. The showman's kind of a bigger and softer sound, uh, kind of like a a twin. Uh, it's got more headroom, and it's not quite as aggressive when you turn it up. And also the basement has the presence knob, which I definitely think that extra high end uh, helps the jazz bass when it's wide open to come across a bit punchier. Because remember, they're still using the EMI red tube desks. Although when they go to Trident, they end up using a sound techniques. But uh, for these sessions, the EQ is very simple and they have, you know, the the shelf and the bell at 5k is it that's and and bass i think is 100 or maybe lower uh, it's a shelf or a bell classic or pop uh, and then they have the brilliance boxes which are like two and a half kilohertz three and a half kilohertz and 10 kilohertz and you know these kinds of frequencies that you hear on the jazz basses that this kind of bell like Um, these frequencies that are that kind of clicky click that is that's in the like kind of that lives from like 800 to two and a half three K so you're not going to do a whole lot to that at two and a half or three and a half K or 10 K um, so I think I think the amp is pretty important in that sound and also just the 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 tone of the bass, as you can hear with the mute, the mute really kind of emphasizes that that punch. <clears throat> at the sound techniques desk here, 
and I just want to show the basics. So, like, if we're trying to get a sound, um, we come up here to the top and we have these impedance selectors, which were on the original consoles, and they select a transformer tap between um, 50, I believe, uh, 200 and <clears throat> 1500 ohms, and then also the pads are here. So, so like for the DI, I think, I don't know if I hear DI much on this song, but I'll just play, so like... So, sounds like a DI. Um, the amp, so the amp... Going, so... Um, and then together, kind of like this, I'm gonna pull the DI down a bit. It sounds pretty good. It sounds great. And you know, the EQ's here, so like if I wanted to add some top, um, like on the DI, so like, let me just pull, so. <clears throat> I wish I could do this in better time, but I, I'm just gonna have to do open notes, but so like the EQ, like the top end, like if I wanna boost a really sharp 2K, I can go. Could do that and disengage. Um, so put the amp in with that. So that's where the EQ engaged. I don't think there's, maybe they used EQ on this, but. Um, I want to let you hear the RS. So the RS-124 on the amp, it's... And with it... Now they didn't have RS-124s at, uh, at Trident, but they did at Abbey Road and they were used on the bass. So uh, you might be able to hear better on the DI itself with, with this rolled on. So I'll play it with, this is everything up. And with the RS-124. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm working with, and I'm gonna just play back a little bit of Prudence and let you guys hear it.
thank you everyone for supporting this channel and watching these videos, having conversation, asking questions, giving your opinion. It's all fun. Please join the Patreon, even the lowest tier. Every little bit helps. Um, I'm going to be releasing a couple stems for the sessions from this video. And as I do the rest of these videos, I will also release those STEM sessions. And I think that's the third tier on our Patreon. Uh, if you want to go that route, it's a pretty cool way to um, have the sessions in 32-bit uh, 96K Pro Tools sessions. And yeah, I the next video is drums and we're gonna rock out with Brendan and talk about kits and the kits Ringo used, uh, two different kits on the album and two, uh, several different studios different engineers. Click like, subscribe, share this. Please, please, please share this to your friends, your family, your Facebook, your Instagram, uh, whatever it may be. Um, and check out our Patreon. Please click the links below. Thanks.